Hello and welcome back everybody, DL here, and I'm back with another dislike video. I do know that people have talked about this for the past day, I am technically late, but however this is before this actually happens, so I view myself as in the clear, and you do have some information coming into this if you have seen other YouTubers or content creators already cover this. And by this... You should know at this point, I'm going to be talking about the version update, alright? I'm not going to talk about all of it, because it's a lot to digest. So I'm just going to break this up into several parts, and, and well, obviously these will all be out before the update actually happens. So, uh, yay, that's very good. But this is a big, big patch. So let's just start to go right into it. Uh, you don't have to subscribe, you don't have to like the video, but I would appreciate it if you do so. Because I've still been enjoying this game, even though I know I, I, know I always say I think it's slow, but I have been because some people are much further ahead than me. I didn't think of my point of view as an ultra casual free-to-play point of view, alright? That, that will be my perspective, I think, alright? So, so well, first of all, um... The, the, the new espers are going to be talked about, alright? This will be... I'll, I'll be talking about the espers and the event here, alright? So, so, so we're going to go over the 5-star first. So it will be Ali or Osiris. He'll, he'll be a 5-star flow. So, so the TR... That, excuse me, I just ate recently. Yeah. So if I still want my words, I apologize. Ali is a fighter esper with support abilities capable of preventing allies from dying. So, sounds like revives or, or invincibilities. So, on the first ability, Hook Strike, it will deal damage and also have a chance of inflicting silence. That's always good. That can lock down some support units. Um, when an, uh, the passive ability now, when an, when an allied expert takes a fatal hit, Ozzy's passive ability, um, Salvic Judgments, grants Salvic Judgments to prevent them from dying, as well as invincibility and recovery, and inflicts Law of... Thought to on um, the attacker. I don't. Uh, oh no! But, 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 then, but then the third ability will be Law of Dot. Deals damage with, with additional damage based on target's mass HP. It's like defense down and taunting. But then when they are ascend, but then when they are uh, not they when it is ascended, it will also grant the caster invincibility. So that is dumb. That's honestly dumb. He can be invincible. Um, um, I believe I believe that the passive is a one-time thing. I would assume, otherwise that would be broken as hell. And and he also gives them invincibility. So yeah, he's just very very strong, right? He is just very very good. Uh, just based off of uh, the sound of things, because like giving invincibility, giving himself invincibility, or defense downs, taunts, silences, that's all very very strong in one kit and he also will deal damage so that's pretty good he'll be he'll be obtainable during the probability up gold gold record player which will increase the chance of acquiring ollie so so he'll be on a radar banner in short uh then we have laura who will be a four star shimmer support and and she will be able to grant a shield to all allies and counterattack the attacker when her shield is destroyed and this or dispelled. So counterattacking, maybe counterattack is that it sounds like. Uh, first ability shield attack that deals damage to an enemy base on max HP and attack, and can also inflict silence. That is very good, but it scales off of two things. So you can run her attack and max HP, or just run her or just run her let me let me get my words real quick. Or you can run her speed with with the attack substats and, and an HP set with that speed set. With, with, that, with that speed a main stat. That's it. That sounds pretty good uh, right there. Um, then, then her passive ability, after each ally Esper takes action, Shield Guardian will grant the, the ally shield which absorbs damage based off of Nenith's max HP. So it sounds like you really want to beef her up on max HP because that in of itself scales off of HP. That will make allies survive much longer. Then when it's ascended, um, um, when an allied 
as my shield is destroyed or dispelled, um, and it will then counterattack. Then the third ability, Iron Wall, will grant shield and crit resist to all allied espers if the target already has a shield, increases shield strength. So, so she can also go shield set as well, and that can just really, really guarantee even more shields, even more strength, just very, very strong. So I believe with her, she is very good, especially because she should be at first crit resist to everybody. So it makes everyone much, much tankier. So people might start running over 100% crit rate, it sounds like. I'm not entirely sure, but that's just my point of view right there. So now we have uh, Nicole, another four-star shimmer. Um, she will be able to revive and take damage for allies while granting them defense up, invincibility, and other buffs. That's dumb already. That sounds dumb. So, so the first ability, Spiral Strike, deals damage to, to an enemy based off her max HP with the chance of inflicting Seer. Seer is dumb because that just increases damage overall. And you can stack this with Defense Break. So that is very strong right there. This goes off max HP. That's very good. Like her second ability, Dead Man's Perfection grants Soul Guard to an allied Esper. That was ascended. Uh, when, Soul Guard, when Soul Guard revives an allied Esper, Nicole immediately grants him standoff and recovery. Then when it comes to um, Soul Guard, uh, that's something new. A part of the damage taken by the carrier will be redistributed to the caster. The carrier, when dies, revives immediately and restores a certain amount of HP based on their max HP. This buff will expire on the caster's death. I assume this can be dispelled as well, because that would be completely broken otherwise if, if it's an undispellable buff. So that's very good for PvP. You can just say, okay, you guarantee second chance. Uh, then the third ability, Spinning Wrap, uh, deals damage to all enemies based off of max HP, aggressive defense up, and invisibility to all allies and soul guard to the ally with the lowest HP. So, you can grant multiple allies soul guard. You can grant everybody invincibility and everybody a defense up. That is stupid. <laughs> that is stupid. Alright. So yay, that is that is Nicole now. And by the way, both of these um will be available via gold record player. So do keep in mind both of these will need to be summonable. But now we move into um Meredith, who will be a four-star wind attuned esper, who will be a support. Um she will possess powerful life seal and supporting abilities. So first of all, Sonic Venom attacks uh, attacks an enemy. And has a chance to inflict poison. Cool, poison. Uh, second ability, Sonic Shield, restores some of HP and, cr and grants defense up and crit resist to an allied Esper. So, so, so she will also do a, a crit resist, but it's only to one ally of your choosing. Then the third ability, Hand of Skilla, uh, reduces the max HP of an enemy by a certain percentage and restores HP to all allied Espers equal to the portion of damage dealt. Then, is it, then when it's ascended, if an allied Esper's HP is above a certain ratio, <laughs> grants speed up. That's good. That's very good. I think with speed up, especially for a PvP-based game, is good. It's really, really good. And and also, reduces max HP of an enemy by a certain percentage. It's really flat HP damage. So this could be incredibly powerful on PvE content, especially. Or so I go, hey, junk. That's very good. And also, one thing to keep in mind with, with Meredith here is that she will be acquired through the event shop while the Lone Star is running. After this event goes away, she will be added to the gold record player for a period of time. So, what that's telling me is that events will rerun. Events will have a chance to rerun, so it's nothing to really stress over. But however, obviously when it reruns, all the rewards will be reset. So make sure you do try to do the event when it happens. And I'm assuming we can do this. I assume we can pick up seven copies of Meredith here. That way, that way, one for the base and the other six will be for, for the residents. That's what I'm assuming will happen here. I hope that's how they do it. 
because that would be really, really nice. I would grind that out near immediately. I'm saving all my stamina pots. That's my point. Let me, let me show you all my stamina bits, all right? Those are about to expire soon. I'm sitting on 28 of those and 9 of these, all right? I'm sitting on a lot of stamina. So I will happily farm her out. I will happily, happily do it. And now, and now uh, this is going to talk about uh, how long I'm going to save that for another video. I'm I'm just going to talk about stuff that's coming out with the event. That's about it. So, so how about we just move on to the Lone Star now, all right? So this will happen post update on the 31st, and it will last two weeks. So, so you do have two weeks in order to do so. Um, event maps will unlock during the event. Complete stories and stages on the maps to redeem Winded Tuned, Epic, Esper, Meredith, and other rewards in the event shop. I'm willing to bet gold records. Uh, there are two event maps, the Oasis and the Chase. Uh, the later one will start one week after. So, so it's one week we have one map, then the next week we'll be getting a second map. I'm okay with that. It depends on it depends on how the shop looks. Because like I don't I don't like it when they when they like lock stuff for, for, for a certain amount of time. It depends how they do it. Uh, the story of stages on the event maps will grant you oasis crests and ancient coins. You can use them to redeem wards in the event shops. Um, um, you will be uh you can obtain oasis crests in the stages from the stages into the oasis and ancient coins from the stages the chase. Uh, and there's also going to be Ozzy's clues. Uh, you can get clue items by clearing story stages on event maps. Use a clue item to unlock a clue in Ozzy's clues. Uh, they will, there will also be daily tasks that can be completed as well. So, so be sure to uh, to, to do your dailies and include these dailies in there. Uh, the shop will, will last one week after the shop closes. So, so that's just a little a tidbit uh, right there. Um, uh, you can use the event tokens to redeem a limited edition name card, legendary Billamons, gold records, and other chance rewards in the event shop. And, and also, um, and also, um, Meredith can, can only be obtained in the event shops right now. Will be added to the gold records later. Did, did I state that? But legendary Billamons, that's always good. And also, limited edition name tag. That's cool. Like that. And I always love golden records. Always love them. I'm actually almost out of pity right now. I'm I'm rounding. I'm almost at 100 uh, gold records. I haven't I haven't spent a single gold record yet. I've been waiting for a raid up. This might be the banner I go on because everyone's saying these units are broken. So I might go for them. Mainly the supports. I might go for them. Uh, but but as if for the banner, this will last the entire duration of the event. So this banner will last two weeks, and then I guess we'll see. But right up will all of suit. I might wait to see a little bit. Because I mean like supports last forever. But but my issue is that they're shimmer. So they're going to be much, much harder to acquire than if it was like a a void. A void four star, for example. Shimmers are going to be much harder to acquire. So that's my main concern. That's my main concern. But I haven't summed yet. So for all I know, that could be nothing at all. Um um, uh, um, Ollie, Ollie's rate up will be doubled. Um, so it's probably assuming me one percent overall rate, but his rate will probably just be one step above. And and also, didn't even the equal gold records after drawing enough times from the gold record. So I guess we're going to get items from the you know, from the summons as well. That, uh, that's what I'm assuming here, at least. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, and added the event story review feature. So this means we can now just reread stories. Okay, so that's nice. That's uh, that's a that's a nice and all. And I will also um, we, and also with this event we will have more stuff added to the DJ contest, uh, more bounties, and also the name card for Ozzy. Obtain staff of Tally name card from the Lone Star event. Obtain Judgment of the Dead name card when you max out. Ollie's resonances. Oh god! Oh, that's well, okay. Sure, whatever. At the very least, we get staff of immortality. Sure. That's fine. Uh, but then these are some balance changes. I will save those for another video. 
But I know they talked about something at some point in here. Uh, there's one more thing I really, really wanted to uh, talk about. Ah, yes, gift packs. There is one gift pack. I don't know. Oh, there's actually several here. Okay, so, so the main thing I wanted to talk about from these gift packs is the Mona skin. All right. So, Moon Goddess for Mona Artemis. It is a skin pack. You can purchase at a discounted price for the duration of the event shop. After, after that duration, it, it will still be available, but it will be at its original price. So yes, as I said before, this is a paid skin. I did call this. I was hoping it wouldn't, but I did call this. This is a paid skin. This is how you monetize games, all right? I'm just saying that right now. This is this is like the way to monetize games. You you make good looking stuff optional, make it completely optional. Then if the player wants it, they will purchase it. That's typically how you monetize games very well, and obviously they they know how to do so. And, and also there are there are going to be a couple a couple of um Lone Star. Uh, packs being added as well. You'll be able to purchase them through throughout the duration of the event, not the event shop, of the event. Then, then like a bunch of other stuff is, is, is like being adjusted and stuff like that. But that is all I wanted to talk about. So that's it for this video. Um, I will be coming back in these patch notes for tomorrow and potentially the day after. It depends on how I want to format it. But I mainly want to. Tell yeah, I'm stumbling over my words again. But I mainly wanted to talk about the event, the banner, and the characters. That was the main thing for this video. So hopefully you did enjoy this. And hopefully you guys are excited because I really want to sink my teeth into the event. That This event sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And this will dictate whether or not I really stay with the game or not. It depends how much I will enjoy these events. So until next time. I'll see you all later. Bye.